We're back. We're back with the Mac, and today we're going to be going over the top three methods of file recovery for your MacBook computer. So MacBook Pro, MacBook, MacBook Air, whatever you've got, this video is for you. So if you just deleted files, formatted files, really anything from your Mac computer, stick around because we're going to be getting started right now. Now, real quick, before we get started, there is something that I do need to talk to you guys about first, real quick. If you've watched this channel before, you probably have an idea of what it is, but if not, basically it's about the premise of file recovery itself. What we're trying to do is get our files back, obviously, but when you delete a file, it's not actually gone. It's just hidden by the computer waiting to be overwritten by another file or whatever later on down the line. So if you just deleted something on your Mac, what I advise to do is stop using it. Stop using your Mac as much as possible. This will give you the best chances of not overwriting the files and therefore having the best chance of getting them back in the future. So if you just deleted something, stop using your Mac until you have a chance to run these three methods on your Mac. So the first one is going to be using a professional file recovery service to actually recover your files from your Mac, not by yourself. So this is something that I don't talk about a whole lot on this channel, but I wanted to touch on a little bit because it is still a very viable option. Now, obviously on this channel, I'm more of kind of the DIY type of guy showing you how to do things all by yourself, as I think that file recovery on your own terms is something that is getting way more accessible and a lot easier to the average person. But if you're not someone that has any kind of technology at all, nor do you want to start, employing someone to actually do it for you is not such a bad idea. Now there are a couple caveats to it, right? First is that it's usually insanely expensive. It's by far the most expensive method on this list. In fact, you can pay upwards of three, five hundred dollars, even sometimes a thousand dollars, depending on how much data is there, how many drives there are. You know, if you've got a maxed out MacBook Pro, it's probably gonna cost north of a thousand dollars to get the top of the line recovery for that device. It's, it's not cheap. And second off, you have absolutely no control over what methods they run, how they try to recover your files. You have no say in it whatsoever. What they get is what you get, and that's the end of it, end of story. But all of that said, if you are one of those people that just wants to hand it over to the professionals, you don't wanna spend any time or money trying to fix it yourself, then that can be a really good way to go. Now, speaking of doing it yourself, this brings me into method number two, which is using Time Machine. So again, I've talked about Time Machine before. This is a grouping of methods that I've talked about on this channel once before, but Time Machine is one of my favorites because it's so powerful and just honestly really cool. So what Time Machine is, is it's a proprietary piece of software that's built into all Mac computers. It essentially takes snapshots of the things that you choose to back up using it, and at any point in time, you can essentially scroll back through time, hence the name Time Machine, and pull a file out of the past and restore it to this point in time. It's really cool. Of course, it is predicated upon the fact that you do have to have enabled it on your device to back up whatever you choose to back up with it, so if you have no idea what Time Machine is, you've never used it before, this method probably isn't gonna work for you and there's a good chance it hasn't been installed or enabled on your computer. So if that's the case, you might wanna check out method number three. But if you have installed Time Machine, you do use it, you do know how it works, it's definitely worth a shot. So in order to recover with Time Machine, all you need to do is first make sure that the drive that you use for Time Machine is connected to your Mac, and then navigate to the folder or drive that you wanna restore from. Now once you're there, go up to the menu bar and search Time Machine, which will bring up the UI. Now from here, you can literally scroll back through time to the date before the files were deleted and get your files back. You can simply highlight them and select restore, which will bring them out of the past and put them back to their original location. So that's pretty much how Time Machine works in a nutshell. It's really cool and I honestly use it a lot because I work with a lot of data, a lot of photos. So having backups of backups is really critical for me. But if you've never used Time Machine before and you haven't enabled it on your computer, I definitely recommend that you do so now because it's extremely valuable as you can see. But don't fear because if that method didn't work for you and you don't wanna go the professional route, there is still one more method that is by far my favorite and that is using recovery software. So the particular piece of software that we're gonna be using today, I've talked about before, and that is Disk Drill, of course. I use it all the time, not just on this channel, but for my own professional use. I'm a photographer and a videographer professionally, and I've misplaced quite a few things in my day, so having a piece of software that I can rely on that can pull files out of a drive for me when all else is lost, pretty clutch. So I like using Disk Drill. I'm gonna show you how to use Disk Drill, and let's get started right now. So go ahead and go down to the link in the description where you can download and install Disk Drill for Mac. And once you install it, go ahead and launch it. 
and there'll be a few tutorials that you can follow to actually learn how the whole UI and the whole system works. But once you're past that, it will bring you to the main list of all the drives that are connected to your Mac, which is what we like to call the disk list. So at this point, what you're going to do is you're going to highlight the drive that is inside your Mac. So your main hard drive or your main SSD that's connected to your Mac, you're gonna find that in your disk list under hardware disks, select it, then go ahead and click the recover button, which is just to the right of the drive name. And this will begin the scanning process. So of course, this may take a little while depending on if it's an SSD or a hard drive, and of course the size of the drive that it is. So mine is probably gonna take around about 20 minutes, so I'm gonna wait it out and catch up to you once it's done. All right, so once any scan has completed inside of Disk Drill, you will immediately be brought to a list of all the files that have been found within that scan. And they're all organized based on the type of scan that was used in order to obtain them. So you can go through them basically just like any other file system on your Mac. It's a lot like a finder window. You can just go through the different folders and see which files have been found. And once you find the files that you want, what's actually really important is you need to actually verify that they're intact. Again, remember back to the beginning when I talked about how files need to be intact in order to be recovered? Well, there's something called preview. It's built into Disk Drill where you can see a full preview, an intact file preview of that file inside of Disk Drill. And if, and if you can see that inside of Disk Drill, then you know that that file's intact. And you can do this just by clicking the little preview icon, which will bring up a preview of the file if it is not overwritten and ready to be recovered. So if that's the case, once you've found the files that you want, go ahead and put a check mark next to them, just like this, that will select them. Then go ahead and choose a save location and go ahead and click recover. And once all the files are recovered, you can go to your save location and use them however you want. So, there you go. Those are my top three methods for file recovery on a MacBook Pro, MacBook, whatever. I really, really hope that you guys found this video helpful. And if you did, always be sure to leave us a like down below. Also, if you have any questions or concerns, you know, things that didn't work for you or something that you want to see me cover sometime down in the future, always be sure to let us know down below in the comments. But with that being said, my name is Andy, and until next time, thank you for watching.